We have a lot of stereotypes about older people. In the US, we have the ever-famous get-off-my-lawn joke and everybody with a grandparent has heard at least one back in my day story. But what if there was an older person so cool that you had to admire them? And what if that older person was treated poorly by the network that put him on a reality show? Welcome back to Tuna No Crust and we're here to talk about what really happened to Roger Barr, the mechanic from Chasing Classic Cars. Towards the end, we'll also tell you what you can do to help. For a bit of context, Roger Barr was part of a show called Chasing Classic Cars. Like many of the shows we talk about, Chasing Classic Cars, which aired on Discovery Channel and Motor Trend, despite some differences behind the scenes. The show focuses on remodeling, refurbishing, and selling classic cars so that they can hit the road again. They also get into the history of the vehicles, making the show amazing for antique car buffs. Chasing Classic Cars has been on the air since June 3, 2008, and currently boasts 16 seasons with almost 200 episodes. But what's the story behind the main mechanic on the show, Roger Barr? Roger Barr was born on February 15, 1936 in Long Island, New York, USA. I learned so much of what I know, which is not a lot, we agree, but um, I hung around Joe Detroit's garage on New York, Staten Island. No heat, one light bulb, he smoked cheap cigars. And I was Rajo the Helper. I don't know why Roger the Helper, but when I wasn't in school or captured by my parents, I was at Joe's Garage. He was always into cars and would wander over to auto garages in his spare time. His mom was horrified when her son came home covered in motor oil, but he knew that his future was in cars and planes from that point on. As he grew up, Barr learned that he had dyslexia, meaning that he had trouble reading. Luckily, his parents were so supportive of his dreams that they not only encouraged him through school, but also moved from New York to New Jersey so that their son could go to Patterson Tech. However, he would also have to pay for his tuition, which he did by performing odd jobs. Oddly enough, his favorite of those jobs was babysitting. I bet you thought it would involve cars, right? Let's pause here to give Roger Barr a round of applause. He knew what he wanted and was willing to work hard to get it. That takes drive and hard work. Having supportive parents helped too. He got really lucky and also put in a lot of elbow grease. After graduating, Barr flew over to Germany to work as an aviation mechanic, but he didn't stop there. He also became a backup driver for Porsche sports cars, leading to a love of not just working on cars but racing in them. After his time in Germany was over, he moved back to America and worked on jet engines for aerospace manufacturer Pratt & Whitney. It wasn't until people began asking him to work on their cars that he opened a garage in Connecticut in 1965. From there, he developed an interesting niche. Along with fixing the neighbor's cars, he would fix any foreign model as long as it wasn't French. Barr also began working with another local car enthusiast, Robert Carini. He would fix foreign cars while Carini worked on older domestic vehicles. He also built race cars, a fact that Robert Carini's son Wayne would always remember. The two had a lot of respect for each other. However, over time, Barr's business began losing money. He sold his garage to Volkswagen and began teaching engineering at Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island. He also taught for five years at the University of Hartford, Connecticut. At 65 years old, an age when most people would be content to retire, Barr began working on cars again. Robert Carini's son, Wayne Carini, offered Barr a job as a mechanic at a shop at 40 Motorsports. When the Essex Television Group, based in Connecticut, not the UK, made the show Chasing Classic Cars, they invited Wayne Carini on board and Roger Barr came with him. Fans thought that Barr added a bit of authenticity to the reality TV show. The rest, as they say, is history. Or is it? And do they work? Only a small problem. This one goes to the back and that one goes to the front. After season 14, Barr stopped appearing on the show. Fans assumed the worst, that Roger Barr had died. No, he didn't. But what happened to him was still sad. Others knew that he was still alive and made, shall we say, generous estimates of his net worth. With all the rumors surrounding Barr's mysterious disappearance, it can be hard to pick out the truth from the lies. What is true was that Barr was injured while working at F40. We couldn't find the exact nature of this injury, 
If you know, share in the comments below. After this accident, he left the show for medical reasons. But the sad truth is that he had to pay those bills himself. The show did absolutely nothing to fund the treatment of one of its stars. He wanted to come back and they declined. Regardless of what the injury was, that doesn't look good. It gets worse the deeper you dig. A post on his Facebook from September 16, 2020 tells all. I would like to correct something out there on the internet. There is a video out there that supposedly has facts about me. While I'm still handsome and breathing, I would like my fans to know two facts. Number one, I have not retired. I kept asking to come back to work and was told no work. Then in the mail I received the notice that I was involuntarily terminated. Yep, not even over the phone or in person, just let go. I found another job that I am really enjoying at the Paddock Classic Car Restorations in New Britain, Connecticut. This leads me to my number two. It would seem that someone we won't mention put out the second big lie. I am not worth 1.3 million. The fact is I have to work to keep a roof over my head and food on the table. I was not paid anything to appear on camera. If I was worth that much, I would be fixing the two teeth that have broken and all the house repairs that are needed. The GoFundMe page started by superfan Steve Cripps was a lifesaver, home saver, and something wonderful. Even if this is subjective, it's hard to get a better answer than that. He wasn't paid for his time on camera. At the ripe age of 86, he still has to pay for his surgery and other expenses. It's safe to say that Roger Barr deserved better. So where is he today? Barr continues to work on cars at a Connecticut repair shop called the Paddock Classic Car Restoration. Check out the Paddock's Facebook and YouTube accounts if you want to keep up with Roger Barr. He also has a wife Susan Barr and two kids who will keep us posted on the truth. By the way, if you want to donate to that fundraiser, the link will be in the description below. This is the same GoFundMe that Barr talked about in his Facebook post. It's still a few thousand dollars away from its goal, so if you want to help Roger Barr, the door is still open. So that's the real story of what happened with Roger Barr. The showrunners did not treat him fairly, and it's a mystery why. You'd think they'd at least pay him to be on the show. Do you know any awesome old people? Have they been screwed over due to their age? And if you are older, what's your favorite back in my day story? Let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell so that you don't miss the next crusty video. We'll see you next time. This one goes to the back and that one goes to the front, but I can manage. <laughs> <laughs> so you're well and, and everything's wonderful, right? The knees are fine and my face is just as ugly as it always has been. So all is well. <laughs>